Hey guys, Flo from Off to Lens here, and today we're going to talk about natural light and more specifically filming interviews using natural light only. In this video we'll use examples of my work and my experience to illustrate and explain how and why I use natural light on my subjects for certain projects. I will talk about the pros and cons of using natural light only, as well as give you some tips on using it as your main source. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's jump into it. So for my work I get to shoot a lot of documentaries, and whilst they might differ in terms of subject, location and style, there is always one constant, the interview or talking head part. Whether or not you will actually have the frame in a final edit, or just use it for voiceover, setting up an interview is always part of a documentary project, as well as copyright, or even commercials. As you know I'm a big fan of using natural light only, part of it is that I shoot a lot of outdoors and travel content, whether it is for work or personal. I tend to have an organic approach for documentary work and only use lights when I have to or when the project needs to, and I try to apply this for my interview frames as well. Talking heads are always daunting when you're starting out, so I thought I would make a video on how I choose to use natural light only for some of my work and why. Here are a few reasons to shoot interviews with natural light only. 1. You don't have the budget to buy or rent lights. Even though LED lights have come down in price in the past few years, buying or renting a light that is powerful enough for interviews can be quite expensive. My go-to light these days, for example, is the Aperture 120D Mark II, which I love, but it comes at 740 US dollars, which isn't cheap. 2. You don't have the time to set up lights. If you have ever shot a documentary, you know that time is of the essence. This applies to pretty much any type of shooting in general, but I find it most relevant and obvious in doing docker work. Setting up lights takes time, energy, and manpower. 3. You are not sure if you will actually use the interview footage. As I said before, sometimes you might film an interview just to have the audio, or if you don't edit your own work, the editor might choose not to use a specific talking head section. In some cases, you might choose to allocate your time for actual shooting, rather than spending time and energy for a frame that will most likely not be used. That doesn't mean that you cannot have a nice interview frame though. I did a series of documentaries around the world for Marriott, and we knew that we will not use the interview frames at all but we still had to shoot it right each time. 4. You want to have a natural feel. Shooting with natural light always gives that organic look that we can relate to, and the same goes for interviews. If you manage to place and capture your subject with natural light only, it can make for a beautiful frame. 5. The location is beautiful and suits it. Sometimes you will get lucky and the location you find yourself in is beautiful and light is pouring in naturally. In these cases, you might not need to do much to start shooting. Here are a few interview scenes for my own work. For this short documentary about beekeeping, we only had 3 hours to shoot the whole piece. We allocated 2 hours for the action part, and 1 hour for the interview. This means that we almost didn't have time to set up. I decided to use the large window in the kitchen on the left as key, but since it was a bit too much and the contrast ratio was higher than I wanted, I just placed a reflector on the floor, camera right, leaning against a piece of furniture roughly at a 45 degree angle. This helped in wrapping the light slightly more around the face. For this surf documentary, we were lucky as the weather was very overcast and pretty even during most of the day, which created a naturally soft light. There is a large window on the right, and since we were shooting early afternoon, the light didn't change much and we were able to shoot more than an hour without any changes. I actually made a full cinematography breakdown video on this documentary, so feel free to check it out. For this one, which is a letterpress documentary, we shot at lunchtime and the light was pretty normal, not too bright, with just a few clouds. Whilst it is in the prettiest shot, the walls of the room being white gave us enough wrap around that I didn't need to use any modifier. The two windows that the light is coming from also gave the subject an eye light, which is always nice. This frame for example was shot just a few hours after, and even though it is technically the same light source using the same window, it is very different in terms of mood and look. Pros and cons of using natural light only. Pros. You can have an organic look and feel and no amount of artificial light can top that, unless of course, you are Roger Dickens. It is easy and quick to set up. As I mentioned before, time is essential in any forms of filmmaking, and using natural light for your interviews will definitely save you time. It is cheap. Again, this will save you money. Cons. Now, shooting interviews with natural light definitely has some pros, but also very important cons. The main one being the lack of consistency. Light changes, and if the interview lasts for too long, you will see the difference in your shots, even if you don't notice it straight away whilst you are recording. I made that mistake in one of my first documentaries years ago, and the changes were so drastic that I couldn't use some of the frames towards the end. 
Second reason is that once you have started, it's probably too late to go back to use artificial lights. If you have started your interviews and realized that the light is fading, or that you don't like the look for some reason, you're kinda stuck. All you can do is adjust your settings on the fly on your camera, or ask politely to start again in a moment. Whereas with artificial lights, you can just adjust the output very quickly. And lastly, on some occasions, you might also look unprofessional in the eyes of some clients if you don't use or bring lights during a talking head section. Modifying and shaping the light. Using natural light doesn't mean that you can't shape the feel and mood of the image. By using modifiers, you can create the look that you're after, just as you would with an artificial light. On all my documentary shoot, I always bring a 5-in-1 reflector that I can use as bounce or fill, as well as some diffusion fabric that I can use on windows. Both very cheap and useful options that can be used to wrap or soften the light. You can also use negative fill, of course, to create contrast and control its ratio. I'll put the gear list down in the description as always. Tips on using natural light. Make sure that the location you're filming in has enough natural light coming in. Most of the time, the bigger the light source, the better it is, and it will be most likely windows on the wall. Of course, you still need to be able to frame the shot the way you want. Be aware of where the windows are and where the light is coming from, and most importantly, where it is going to travel over a certain period of time. Film when it is brightest outside, or around midday to limit the light changes. I always do my interviews between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Normally shooting at sunset and sunrise is ideal, but when it comes to talking heads, I find it much better and safer to pick that time of day. Make use of practicals. Sometimes you can actually create a very pleasing image by using a mix of natural light and practical light. This can be a lamp in your living room or kitchen, an LED tube above, etc. It will make the scene more interesting by adding some depth and color contrast. That's it for me today guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.